Hello and welcome to the DMs Book Club, a podcast where we talk about Dungeons and Dragons and how we might include it in our role-playing campaigns. Yes. Hey, I did it. You did it. Now improvise. You did it. Now, now improvise. oh, you only said no. That's yeah. the stage direction. That's stage direction. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I'm Ron Burgundy. Uh, question mark. What? Uh, <laughs> that's what he does on the show, right? Oh, he does. Yes, he yes, does. He, he does. says I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> that's a question, question mark. mark. <laughs> question? Uh, yes. How are you, Fiona? I'm doing very well, Hamilton. How are you? I'm good. How is your dungeons and how are your dragons? How well, my dungeons are uh, dark and gloomy. Um, if you, if by dungeons you mean going to Kingston today, which is a very <laughs> exciting place, um, obviously by, at the time of recording it is currently flooded. Um, is so, it? Oh, oh it's pretty it. bad. It's pretty bad. Oh, it's no. also in the middle of nowhere. I've discovered. Um, I, was, I went to Putney Bridge today as well. That was a very it's nice, a very pretty bridge. It's very I was pretty gonna, bridge. I have um, actually it was Barnes Bridge, but I have a, a, an anecdote. Can I give you an anecdote? You can give me an anecdote. Can I offer Go for an it. anecdote? To I, I will res- gladly receive it. I used to be. Uh, a, a rower, but uh, the per- the coxswain, the no the way. person who, who tr- um, I did like single skulls, and then mm. when I was at school, I used to do like the first team because I was like I wasn't six foot, I'm five ten, which is not enough to be a great mm. rower. So you could do singles anyway. So I used to be a person that steered the bridge, and we were getting um, a lesson from uh, uh, Matthew Pinson, who's actually a, a, a gold medal rower, right? It's, yeah, so is, a, yeah, yeah, he's a proper rower. And we'd got this, our school had organised this and got us like an opportunity. So like, you know, it's really important, you know, in front of a gold medal rowing, you know, famous person. And he's in one boat and my coach is on the other side of me. Right. And they're both shouting at me individually with like with loudspeakers <laughs> as I'm rowing this boat. And one and we're hitting, we're coming to a bridge. And one is shouting at me, go left, go left. The other one's shouting at me, go right, go right. And I just went, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. So I just had to say, stop the boat, because I was about to hit because they were barging me in, so I couldn't go right. Because the other one either way. I couldn't go either way. And this bridge was coming at me at the, the like the pylon. And I had to literally stop this boat, and I felt I literally have never been so red in my whole life in oh, front of, you know, that, like... That is like an anxiety dream. Like, it was. People <laughs> both shouting at you from I think I have woken up in sweats about it since. I mean, this was... Oh, bloody hell, we're talking 16 years ago, and it's still I'm oh. still, it's still there with me, to be honest. But there you gosh, go. Gosh, gosh. Anyway, anyway, away from these anxiety boat <laughs> dreams that we've been having... This um, is proper D&D chat. This is, this is proper D&D chat. Well, let's go into it. Mm. Um, I guess, yeah, I'll tell you what we're talking about today, yeah, shall I? Sorry, because I picked this topic, I was like, huh? Um, yes, yeah, so, Hamilton, I'm sure you are aware we've had... Recently, over the last couple of weeks or stuff, we've had the D&D celebrations. Uh, mm. The general, obviously, we've had uh, the Wild Beyond the Witchlight release, but also we've had, um, over that weekend, we had, obviously, different games, some panels, and then finally, apparently, the most anticipated panel of the weekend, the future of D&D. So we are going to spend some time to unpack what we learnt, mm-hmm. even though it is a couple of weeks later <laughs> by the time you see this, but I'm sure you can go back and watch that panel in your own time. It's a very interesting panel with mm. four of the... Yeah, it is four, four of the main D&D players that have been working on several of the projects over the last couple of years. Mm. Even someone who was called Head of Dungeons and Dragons. Yes. Which I didn't. I, I was like, <laughs> I'd love that title, please. <laughs> if, you know, when they when they want to move on to better things, you know, like if, even I'd have to work for them. If I could just mm. have the title, that'd be cool. I like, yeah, I like the idea that you like you are like Chamberlain or something. You have to go up through the ranks of like, um, like oh, like captain and lieutenant, yes. and then finally head, head, <laughs> just... head of D and D. Such great. Anyway, I was very jealous mm. of their roles, but yes, uh, yeah, no, and it was also was it. Um, Jeremy Crawford and mm-hmm. Chris Perkins mm-hmm. and, and two of the people I can't remember. I'm gonna have to look this uh, up now. I have it's very embarrassing. Uh, sorry, oh, uh, Liz Shu. Yeah, Liz and Shoe? yeah, and uh, Ellie Ossili Wood, who did the hosting, who's the yes. BBC presenter. I recognise her from. Yeah, she she's. I didn't realise that she. So she is a massive Magic the Gathering uh, player, oh, right. and as obviously a, a video game person as well. So she's been on mm. like uh, outside X. Xbox and I think yeah. uh, Dice Breaker and stuff like that. So and has very quite mm. rapidly shot up the ranks to be the UK representative to sort of do stuff all, all stuff nerdy, which is fantastic yeah. for her. She does the so BAFTA really Game Awards as well. That's how I remember her from that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Ray Winning, yeah. who is the head of Dungeon Dragons. Ah, yes, the head. Yes, mm. that was right too. So I guess diving in. Mm. Um, so I guess because they they 
what's interesting about this panel as I, I as a lot of the comments <laughs> on the YouTube uh, video said was like oh yes teasing about stuff they can't really announce yes. <laughs> which I, <laughs> I hate those it's like when people come on to like Parkinson and stuff I, I, okay again the American listeners are like onto a talk show like mm. uh, Tonight like Show like Jonathan Ross or yeah uh, Jonathan Ross or, uh, yeah the Tonight with Jay Leno and they they're like mm. a Marvel event they're in the they're in a Marvel movie and they go I'm doing a Marvel movie can you tell us about it nope nope so why are you here <laughs> like oh, what are you doing here guys because we just want yeah. juicy gossip they gave us like juicy they gave us some little snippets but yeah yeah it's in- i guess it's interesting because obviously they didn't as as with all things now and i guess maybe it's just the the way we consume I- information in media like we like like a couple of years ago we would have like maybe caught up with like a season finale maybe a couple of weeks later and not be worried about being spoiled whereas mm. now if you go onto twitter like any time I go onto Twitter, maybe a couple of days after Critical Role has been announced, there's all this fan art, there's all these threads yeah. and stuff of like, hey, spoilers, and I'm like, oh, I'm several episodes behind, it's too late now. Uh, <laughs> I'll see whatever it is. And yeah. usually by the time I get round to it, I've, I've completely forgotten about it. But it's, So I just mm. found it interesting, they were, always, they were all sort of like, we have stuff to announce, but we don't want to spoil anything. And I'm just like, yeah, but this is over the next three years, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to forget by the time it's 2024 what you said. And exactly. it does. And also... I- I don't. I know it's. I get the reasons for it, but also you do kind of think like, I think you could. It's it's trying to manage that hype expectation. But you think twenty twenty two is coming pretty soon. I think you could manage yes. a hype for something really big like that for a year mm. I, potentially. But I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah. they. So what's interesting about that? So they sort of said stuff. It's obviously in motion, and yeah, we can. Let's talk about the twenty twenty two stuff. So what they've yeah. said, the big thing about twenty twenty two is that two major classic settings are being. Uh, being looked at re-released um, but the caveat which I thought was, was interesting we were talking about this off camera mm. uh, they will be published in new formats completely brand new to mm. D&D yeah. and so it's unlikely it's going to be a book uh, or it will be I think yeah. it will be a book some 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 sort of copy or physical copy probably will be on D&D Beyond mm. but it's like what other formats will know, there be? I, well yeah well you the others that I know of that they have done before is an audiobook version. Yes. They did uh, the Player's Guide to the Outlands. This is a two E uh, Planescape oh. one, and it was done as a. Um, so the book was written, and uh, mm. like all other Planescapes, it's done very much in a someone explaining to you the rules. So it's very meta, and it's very much explained like you have mm. in a lot of them. It's a guide. It literally is. Um, if you've played the Planescape Torment, it's the skull in that. So it's a floating oh, okay. skull. Okay. And he talks to you through like all the different like locations in the outlands and it's and you mm. and I've, you can get a cd if you buy it on dm's guild you actually get the mp3s and you can just listen to it and it's very fun. it's a nice little it's just a way of accessing mm. a sort of guide you know in a very sort of talky yeah. format so maybe well, it's something like that i mean i i would like that because I, I know mm. last year or the year before there was like um Oh, and this is where I'm going to get the hashtag wrong, but it was basically lots of DMs reading from a book and reading a chapter aloud for something. Oh, right. I, I don't know if it was a charity, but like Chris Perkins did it, like just re- mm. reading something. Mm. And I, it was, I, I, again, some sort of But actually, I was thinking about it to myself, and like, I listen, I, I absorb yeah. content. I, I consume yeah. content, not absorb it. <laughs> um, <laughs> mostly through audio now. Like, I listen to podcasts yeah. on, on the on the commute and stuff like that. So I actually wouldn't mind like a... Like a a podcast version or an audiobook version of maybe the main books perhaps like obviously like rules or even like the adventure stuff would be interesting but I, again i don't know how maybe it's just me as a because then you could always skip to those chapters and be like oh i need to know what the grappling rules again i'm just gonna listen to somebody else explain it rather than read it again in a book but i totally agree and i think if it was like if you had it an app and you know like on the D beyond you have the you have all the chapters and you can see the sort of index and the and the, mm-hmm. the contents page i, I well we're doing this DMs book club, and I'm trying to. We're reading like a campaign setting uh, for a couple of weeks. It's 250 mm. pages long. I would have loved to just be able to listen to someone read that to read me, it. because yeah. even because then you could just take in all of that information and then go back and, and re, like mm-hmm. focus on what you need. I do think it says uh, the other thing that they said on there: new things in the digital arena to be announced in 2022, which mm. makes me think it's more digital media. Mm. They did yeah. also do the audio book with. Benedict Cumberbatch reading Drizzit. Oh, Drizzt. Yeah, that's coming out. That's 
Is that out or out. is that coming it's out? It's out. It's on That's podcast out. locations, I think. Oh, yeah. well, go go read that. Or, no, go listen mm. to that even. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah, because I, I, they had the animation up over that weekend as well, yeah. which is a great animation in the year. Mm. I, I, you know what? I didn't realise it was Benedict Cumberbatch until right at the end when he goes narrated by Benedict Cumberbatch. Like, yeah. Oh, yes. Now that makes sense. <laughs> like this, this very dark, gruffly voice. It's like, oh, darkness, yeah. darkness. Oh, I'm Dritz. And you're like, ooh. Yeah. Don't know who it is. Well, he does smile oh. pretty well, doesn't he? So he does, I yeah. guess that's he's got he's got range. He's got range. Yeah. Uh, but, but I guess yeah. I was, I, the thing I was going to say then I mentioned mm. it to you off camera is that I have a sneaking suspicion because obviously we've got stuff like Roll Twenty, mm. uh, Tabletop Simulator, stuff like that. I think with the D and D Beyond, with the app, and obviously with the the overlays and stuff which you can plug in, and then you know as soon as you do something, it changes the overlay. I feel that they're just going to have a whole. Wizards of the Coast official. It seems strange they don't. It literally yeah. seems. It I mean, the happening. fact that they didn't is the reason why D and D Beyond came along and said, "Well, someone's got to make it and make some money out of it." Because, but if you've been to the Wizards of the Coast website, like, yeah. come on, guys, <laughs> it's not nineteen ninety seven anymore. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, like that color scheme. Come it's, on, like, it's whoa, it doesn't. It? Bang. it just, it's you. I mean, and I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I just feel like they've got some good graphical designers out there, you know, so yeah. get them working on your website, please. Mm, yeah, get, <laughs> get, get some... Well, no, no, I think you're right. It's, it's about getting, like, updating it. Well, I assume they'll be might be updated for the 50th anniversary, which yeah. I'm sure we'll get on to. But it's, I do think it's interesting, th- this idea of publishing things in new formats we've not explored before. So that's instantly says yeah. to me that these might be exclusive stuff to a, a tabletop like official version that mm. they've made because they are campaign yeah. settings as well which well let's go on to that so yeah. obviously you did a bit of uh crowdsourcing i did very exciting I so did. you you asked you asked the great i asked Twitter. the nation i asked yes. well the multiple nations that we have access to with this modern mm. era <laughs> so i just put out a little thing on the dragon steel twitter and i'm going to try and do more of these so if you're out there like you know just uh you can find us at dragon steel one word i'll also always tag in at the dms book club so you can always find them both there but i just did a i asked what is the old called old school campaign setting that people are hoping that comes back from the wizard D D books next year i put i obviously you know balance the scales by saying i want it to be planescape i also yep. gave only far, four because you can only do four on twitter which was planescape spell jammer dragon lance and dark sun because i think they're the ones i hear the most about mm. And Planescape won, clearly, because it's the best. So, <laughs> <laughs> boo. You know, it's fine. It's, no, so, it, and that's just, and that was like 40, uh, 42 people voted on it, but I think it's like, you know, it's a good solid majority, but there was equally the same out for Spell Jammer and Dark Sun. But what, what was interesting is people's thoughts and just re- listening to people's thinking, it mm. is the Spell Jammer and the Planescape seem to be the ones that everyone believes is coming next. I think people i think people have a lot of affection for planescape we talked about that in a previous show mm. and it's and i think but then spell jammer there was one person who says um to one person spell jammer is definitely a thing they've been doing uh, loads of hinting and i was like okay so what hints <laughs> what hints are these and they said well there's spelt there's in um rhyme of the frost mation uh, mation the rhyme oh. of the frost maiden maiden features a crashed nautiloid which is the big um oh yeah, the big mind flayer ship oh, mind yeah, flayer the thing, I, exactly. the thing i absolutely hate yeah <laughs> uh these are all spoilers by the way for now on uh dungeon of the mad mage has a spell jammer itself in it mm-hmm. uh and uh the uh tcoe i don't know what that is tcoe the curse of e <laughs> I don't know what that. I, pro- I can't remember what those. There's a far realm incursion depicting multiple Nautiloids, and uh, Volo's Guide and um, Tome of Foes feature spell jammer creatures like a Neogi and a, and a, and a Gith. Um, and Baldur's Gate three. Also oh, Tasha's is- Cauldron of Everything. Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Phew! I was, I was just staring at my books, going. Uh... Like, what is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> a far realm incursion depicting multiple Nautiloids is in that, as well as Baldur's Gate three, famously. And then on yes. the D and D panel show, right at the end. They showed Boo. Boo, yes. So do you want to describe who Boo is to See, those who might not know who yes. he is? Like, I had to go look it up because I'm one of those people. I'm <laughs> well, actually, I don't know that much about Spelljammer. I more mm. At the time this was out, Planescape was my jam, and mm. some people were I'd not Spelljammer. Uh, anyway, there's something weird in there. But Boo is a giant miniature space hamster who supposedly is exactly the same as any normal hamster. <laughs> <And> yep. <laughs> 
Uh, and famously, if you'd played the Baldur's Gate games, the, the old-fashioned ones, he was in that as Minsk, uh, who's a character. Companion, yeah, yeah. Companion, yeah. And he's and that was part of the Spelljammer lore, the original uh, mm. Spelljammer. So um, I think that it sounds pretty much like it that. It sounds confirmed, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Like, And it's it's been very interesting. Whenever, you, whenever I watch panels about mm. D&D and they're always like, oh, what's coming up next? And it'll be, this is a new adventure. The amount of comments I know is like, where is Spelljammer? It's, yes. I just find that really interesting. Like, I guess I, I, I get the idea of like ha- having high fantasy space. And I, I wonder at the time, again, at, maybe at some point we, sh- we mm. could look back at previous um, mm. editions. Because I, I have no, I've never really looked at it. The only thing we've mm. looked at, I think, briefly is uh, the GIF, those space hippos, oh, yeah. um, which are hilarious. But again, it's... I. For me, it's just the way that I think that people talk about it is that that's that idea of nostalgia. We're like, we want these things. And I'm like, yeah. I, I, I get it, but I like new things because it, it's just, I just, yeah. I want to see what else we can do. Um, 100%. But it's just, I guess it's just the way people uh, go about these things. I think the thing is, and there are people out there doing um, uh, actual plays in this environment. I know two off the top of my head, at Carney mm-hmm. Sideshow and... Uh, the fourth culture both exist in pa- in Planescape settings, which is in the DM's gu- it's in the DM's guide, but it's literally you get five seconds of text. Mm-hmm. I think all it is is it feels like I think Planescape for me is just like well it's it's in the law, just chuck it in, like it doesn't take a lot, just chuck all that stuff in, mm-hmm. and you can go find it. it j- and maybe when they talk about other media coming in, maybe they might be able to bring in just allow people to have access to old campaign mm. guides would be that's one of the things i'd love them to add to their list of like mm. on dnd beyond or if they do their own version play some 3.5e mm. or maybe play some 2e i don't know let's Ooh. go crazy but even just mm. having access to those documents um there yeah that'd be quite good yeah but uh, the thing with spell i think that's yeah, so what i was saying with planescape though is that it's just i think it's just like it's a great law and spell jammer i think as well is such a fun idea it's just mm. it's the closest you get to space yes. and everyone wants a bit of space and i think yes. And I mean, you could just go play Starfinder, but I think people already know D and D, so just add it to my yeah. list. I think is where it no, is. No, I, I, I think no, I think I, I, I think because it's the way it involves obviously all the other races and stuff, and I get that. And like uh, Dark Sun as well, and Dragon yes. Dragonlance as well. I think obviously Dragonlance I know vaguely from the books and stuff because obviously they are having Fizzband coming out soon, mm. which is obviously a character from the Dragonlance series. Although I've I've heard little rumors that it's not. It's like a mention of Dragonlance, but it's mostly about the dragons mm. in the the book, so not too much on that. But so maybe there will be a full setting, just to maybe it's a setup to that. But Dark Sun sounds very fun. Yes. This idea of a Mad Max apocalyptic things where was it halflings are cannibals? That's as far as I got, and I was yeah. like, this sounds interesting. So it's like two ends of the scale, I guess. So yeah. it'll be yeah. I I, I again. Would I want to play a full campaign in that? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah, Dark Sun's <laughs> never really captured my imagination, but I think it again, it was a bit niche and I think it and mm. it captures those people's like the nostalgia for people who did play it. But mm-hmm. the the one you did mention um a second ago, you were just saying about Dragonlance, Dragonlance. is interestingly the people from Dragonlance, uh mm. Tracy and um got the other one. Uh, Hickman. The Hickmans. Uh, the Hickmans, yeah. They have started their own campaign guide for a different mm. game that they're making so i imagine that they're probably busy <laughs> that's all yeah. so and i think well, they was... wouldn't be able to do it without them kind of feeling. well but there was also uh, the, con- the controversy yes. last year and the, yes. the sort of lawsuit and stuff mm. so who knows what that was sort of really about like i'm sure yeah again not to speculate or anything like that no. as, as someone who's actually never read any of the dragon answers i'm getting around to it i promise <laughs> <laughs> it's just on the list but uh, yeah it's that sort of thing where it's like hmm Maybe that whatever that is, is is left for now. But so yeah, so just to go back, yeah. so we got two of these classic settings. Who, who mm. knows what they might be uh, published in another format? And then it says a peak at a third one uh, in 2022, and mm. then in 2023 a third classic setting. I assume it's the same one. It's not just a peak of the third one, and then we mm. get a completely yes. different one. So that will be quite interesting, I think. Mm-hmm. And then um, they mentioned. On top of that, that they want, they, they've heard the community say that we want more adventure anthologies. So mm-hmm. very much like Candlekeep uh, Mysteries, where it's always sort of one shots and stuff. So they're going to do more like that. So I can imagine like Tales from the Awning Portals, my, mm. my thinking as well, where they've already got those classic, very slimmed down modules and stuff, putting that into a book. But maybe they're going to do some more, it's not crowdsourcing, but, you know, getting people from the community to yeah. write more one shots. Because it seems to have been very, very successful. I had a quick, yeah. we, I recently did another uh, 
DMs book club uh, with a guest co-host about Candlekeep itself, mm-hmm. um, which is a, it's a fascinating place. And so having like that as a setting, and then having these idea of a, a one shot in a book and stuff like that yeah. is quite interesting. So I don't know. Yeah, I, I quite like that idea. But there's no other mention of like adventure modules. So maybe they're all yes. adventured out for now. So. Well, maybe. I mean, you, you think of uh, some of them, I don't know, Spelljammer so much, but maybe Planescape could be done as an anthology as well. You know, you could give the campaign Ooh. setting and then mm. give quite a... Because it would work very well at at doing... Because uh, they've already, in the original setting, there was, a, there was a big overarching story and I think they've done that and maybe people wouldn't want to do it. But you've got all these different mm. planes. You could just have an adventure in Archeron or in Mechanus or in uh, Aborea and just have a little and give everyone a little flavour of all of these ones, which gives everyone a nice little intro Mm -hmm. and leads you on to to how you'd run your own campaign sort of thing. I I like that as an idea. Yeah, just like, yeah, yeah, here's an example, but go, yeah, but this is only one of many adventures you could have in these planes. That'd be really cool, actually, because, yeah, Mm. because we've done a bit about those in obviously in another DMs book club, like from the DMs guide and stuff. And yeah, Yeah. some of them are just like a paragraph or two. Of that, and obviously, I know, obviously, like you're saying, Planescape will have a lot more on it. But yeah, that'd be yeah. really fascinating to be able to, if you had to hop between the planes and like how yeah. each one is different, and just have a taste of that. Really yeah, cool. it'd be a good one. I like, mm. like that. Uh, the other thing that I uh, noticed on there was um, they're just the, the sort of important things that they were saying includes. They were saying they were making more tools as well to make the adventures more accessible to DMs as well as everyone generally focusing mm. on accessibility and bringing in new players. But I think. As I said, the Wild Beyond the Witchlight has those um, little notes saying what you should tell your your players, and it was mm-hmm. a very small little moment of it. Um, and also uh, on in top of that as well, with Wild Beyond the Witchlight saying that they made it so it's you don't have to have any combat. They mentioned that again, saying mm-hmm. that that's a theme they're going to bring back. Maybe not. There's no combat, but thinking of other ways of managing the play or what the play is about and how you mm. accomplish your goals, which could could be really interesting. I think if they're given mm. free reign on that. I'm sure they'll come up with some great ideas. That that be interesting because again, I think we spoke about it before when we did mm. our impressions of it. Is that while beyond the Witcher, it's the, the the story itself, and it is a, obviously we highly recommend having a look at it. Is that it makes sense that there might not be combat because the Feywild is such a mercurial place. Is that obviously that is such a big aggressive act? You've made a huge faux pas as a result. Mm. Whereas stuff like if you look at previous ones, like you know, thinking like Rhyme of the Frost Maiden, Tyranny of Dragons, and stuff. Yeah. That is all. It's 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 an adventure. It's combat mm. is inbuilt. So it'd be interesting to see if they are telling s- same stories or redoing it because obviously they've redone yeah. Curse of Strahd. Like yeah. you can't really take the violence out of Curse of Strahd because well. the whole point is that you you've got to topple the the lord the the lord of the the dread realm. You know, is that so? It's it'll be very interesting to see how that story is developed. And I I will mm-hmm. be I'm a hundred percent here for it because a campaign without combat. It's less admin for me, so I'm I, am, I approve yeah. of that. But it'll be very interesting to see what stories they come up with, and because like like I said, I think I said to you before, is that mm. this is this D D and D is what I did quite like about it when they talked about it in the panel is that it is it is a living game. It's mm. constantly changing and develops and stuff, and I love that. But for me, it's always been a combat game. You know, you have these these uh, mm. modifiers for hitting and stuff like that. So. Getting rid of the combat is like, well, do we? Are you having other mm-hmm. mechanics come in for the social stuff? Are we going to be more about how do you write a social encounter? Yeah. And are we going to really reward players for role playing really well or come up with a great solution in character, out of character? Because that feels even more nuanced rule stuff. Because obviously, some people don't like role playing yeah. at all. And they like, are they talking in the third person or they just like being themselves? And that's obviously completely fine. But is this, do you reward because they, they said a, a really cool argument line mm. really well? Yeah, so yeah. I, it's, it, yeah, it's just it'd be interesting to see what they come up with. I'd be keen, keen to see. When we play our one shots on Dragon's Jewel, we give points to level people because we try and get them to level up in the show. And mm. so we have one that I just call actor points that I can deem whatever I want to give to the characters to like help them level up. They get twenty points per level they have to get, and so they get help for healing each other and doing like normal sort of XP sort of things. But we added mm. in yeah the actor points one, and maybe I feel that like that could be expanded on. And it's always that's how I dish out bonuses mm. for you've just done something really cool in just yeah. by saying that and it's just and that's how I work it yeah and I and I like that as a DM because uh, like I've always I've, in my rule of cool and anything that makes me laugh like and I, I'm very easy to like laugh make, make laugh and stuff like that but if they if something amazing happens I'm like that's pretty cool you get an inspiration point and I, I, you know it's I, I agree I think 
Mm. It gets to a point where it's like, if you're taking one mechanic away, you need to add another one. Would it be this? I wouldn't like it if it was that myself. So that's, that's what my thinking process is. Well, that They must have to mm. balance it out in some way, which they are changing about which we'll come to. But I, the only yeah. thing I wanted to quickly add before we mm. probably go on to that is that they have announced... Oh, they kind of announced right at the end they are developing two new settings, but it's in very early stages. So this will be the first time since Eberron that was published way back in 2003, I think. I can't I think remember. Said. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I had it in my notes, but I have to have a look. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, 2004. But, so th- so 2004. So that's like uh, that's well well over 10 years ago. Yes. So I li- I live in the I live in the 90s. So, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's just the way you, way your minds work. But um, mm. so yeah. So currently they are in very very early stages, and they might not see the light of day. But I think that's impressive that they are free revisiting free traditional campaigns, traditional free classic campaigns, plus an anthology probably crowdsourcing, and then probably two new campaign mm-hmm. settings. Chris Perkins All is a busy the, man. They are busy. <laughs> Non-stop. If you need any help, Chris God. Perkins, my email address is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, for, for art stuff, go for it. I, I'll be there to go, I like this. That, that's as far as I go <laughs> in my, my thing. But yeah, so that's quite exciting. And they, again, they couldn't reveal too much of that because, again, it's that sort of thing where it might not make the light know, of day. Yeah. So. He did mention that one of them, and I know you would like this, and I was like, oh, no, no. Uh, it was horror setting, super horror. It's yes. going to scare the pants off everyone. It's yes. like, we've got Ravenloft. We've had two hot. We have Curse of Strahd again and Ravenloft. Yeah. We don't need any more horror. Come on. I think, I don't know. They're going through their, their zombie phase. Like yeah. I went through it ages ago. They'll, they'll admit, oh no. No, even better. They're going through their vampire stage. Zombie yeah? apocalypse. Zombie. I'm going to, I think you called it. I think that's what it is. A zombie apocalypse. Fine. Campaign fine. setting. Oh God! Can you imagine? Oh, anyway, anyway, but yeah, yeah. let's go on then. So, yeah. so that's two thousand and uh, two thousand and two. Wow, that, that's again, that's where my brain is currently. Twenty twenty two. Yes, it was the great line that Chris said was like, "I'm currently living in twenty exist. And I beyond. exist in twenty twenty two and beyond." <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wrote that I down. That. I thought that was good. I thought that was a great line. Um, so yeah, so that's twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three technically, but twenty twenty four. Is the fiftieth anniversary, and this yeah. is the big announcement was that they are going to be uh, releasing revised versions of the player's handbook, monster manual, and the DM's guide. And what does everyone, this mean for my I, usual five E campaign? It, it means nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's quite funny because like, there was loads of videos, obviously. And this and this has been the biggest sort of thing. People are like, is this six edition? Am I going to have to rebuy all my books? You know, blah blah blah. blah. And obviously, mm. the answer is no. You do not have to do that. So that's quite good because obviously everything is backwards compatible, and all these new products are coming out. They will be. And what they did announce though, which I thought I really liked, so they had originally like a gift uh, rule set so where you could buy DM's guide, um, the the player's handbook, and the monster manual all in one. Mm. Get a nice DM screen, etc. And it's like here's here's your starting set essentially as a as a bullying uh, DM. But now because there's so many other cool rules and all that sort of thing that you might oh what to they have an expansion set so mm. in this one they'll have like a re revised editions of um uh Zanifal's guide to everything tasha's cold and everything and a brand brand new book which yeah. i i i i feel it's just replacing Volo's guide to everything <laughs> with mordekaiden's uh yes. mordekaiden presents the, presents monsters I, of the multiverse i just i like that in my head it's like doctor strange you know yes. it's, it's, everything obviously we've got marvel coming out now it's everything multiverse and I, that's the yeah. that's where they're going now is like you said with planescape with all of a sudden it is now going to the multiverse where can we yeah. go with our games oh my gosh Mordenkainen is the doctor strange of the D verse isn't he he really 100%. is the yeah, way he looks yeah. and everything like that 100 i just never got that with his foamy toes as I <laughs> foamy say, toes like, yes. foamy toes uh <laughs> And it, yes, so yeah, it looks quite. I love the art. Another fan. I might just flash the art now. Bosh, yep. it's there and it's gone again. But it's um, beautiful. Both oh. the main cover and the very sort of oh. ethereal 80s soundtrack cover that's on the alternate one. The alternate quite... ones, they are gorgeous, aren't they? I, mm. I literally was like, hmm. I mm. now <laughs> want the alternate versions because, yeah. again, just to describe it for our podcast listeners, it is white backgrounds I'll with almost it. like, whoop, whoop. yeah, for the, for the watchers, for the listeners, it's like a white oh, yeah. background with um, like like pinky, mm. pastely tones of various like uh, of, of things, and it, it's just it's minimalistic, so mm-hmm. it looks gorgeous. So it yeah, looks like an art book. It looks like a yeah. book that I would buy 
from there's a really nice sort of mag there's a magazine shop where i live which is just like really esoteric magazines and they just all look beautiful you just want to have it mm. on your coffee table it looks like one of those things that you'd be like yeah. and i want them to remake all of them now in that style and then i'll have that because hydro 74 who does all the other alternate covers really cool really edgy sort of like mm. rock and roll skulls and stuff and you're like yeah i love it but actually this this mm. is something different and i'm quite a big fan of it i think it's mm. um yeah, I think it's gone, yeah, going in a, in a more, like, I don't know, stylish, more graphically stylish, I think. Yeah, yeah. I know, I think so too. And it's, I think it's interesting, because I wonder if they will also appeal to people who are like, oh, I'm not so keen on the D&D because of the covers. Because mm. I'm thinking, like, you know, when they sort of re, um, recovered, like, the Harry Potter books, obviously they had a certain yeah. art style, and then they were like, here's the ones for adults. And you're yes. like, okay. Um, and there's the other one, which I, I've now completely got out of my head. Never mind. But yeah, it's yeah. that sort of thing where I think it's maybe it's like trying to appease to other people. Oh, that was it. So so I feel very ashamed now. So I, I this is a big reveal. I've never really read any Terry Pratchett because I hated the covers. <laughs> like I just I, You know I, what? I was put off by them as a child as well. And you know, I've I've read a bit of them since, but I yeah. totally agree. They were just so like Ugly. Grotty. <laughs> Yeah. Ugly and grotty, yeah. but they are obviously Terry Pratchett is one of the yeah. best writers, fantasy writers. Like I, yeah. again, I'm sure that's be one of our my big uh, mm. DMs book club recommendation. If you you want to do funny fantasy like Monty Python s, Ter- Terry Pratchett is the way to go for it because it, it's just a beautifully well written mm. like world. The whole of Discord, but yeah, just the the covers. I was like, I don't want to read this. It's not no. not my thing. So so that's the thing. I think I do think there's maybe that side to it as well. That maybe they just want to get to more people and maybe have it on your thing going. Oh yes. This is my D&D books. Because, again, if you look at all the other sort of, like, uh, RPGs that are out there, you know, they are... It's, I don't think there's only, like, a couple of them that are white or have those alternate co- covers like yeah. that. So I think it's interesting they've gone into that branding to maybe just make it like, hey, we can be pretty and we can yeah. use this as a... Like you said, yeah, it's almost like an art book and a, a, like yeah. a game to play. So it's very interesting. It's just appe- and as you said, yeah, it's appealing to a, a more diverse, like, group of people because the, the whole you know, skulls and, and you know, hardcore rock and roll is quite an old-fashioned idea of what Dungeons & Dragons mm. is all about. And I think if they're moving to these more, you know, like, the wit- well, Beyond the Witchlight, it's a beautifully more beautiful cover. You've got what? yours there. What's that? Well. What's yeah. that? Did you ask me about <laughs> Yeah, was, uh, Oh, just handy, you've got one there. Again, I've that's got... already moved. And that's by Hydra 74 as well, actually. But that yeah. is that is moving in a more... Yeah, it's just a, it's just a, it's a, it's, a, it's got a completely different aesthetic to it, which I think is lovely, and it's nice that they should be individual. I always, mm. yeah, I have to do them oh, again. Uh, this is maybe too much personal, but I have to do for my projects at work. Whenever I'm doing different buildings, I always do. Di- we always have like a branding, which is our company. I remove that and do my own one. I always get told off for it for each different building to give it its own character, and I think that yeah. that's that's what you should do with these mm. things. So I'm I'm happy. I'm all for it. Is all I'm saying, really. No, I agree. I am all for it as well. But I think we'll move on then to yes. the actual rebalancing and, and mechanic changes that they've sort yes. of announced. Uh, so essentially, with Monsters of the Multiverse, so this Mortal Cannon Presents, which, I, again, I just in my head, Mortal Cannon now owns like a theatre. That's, yeah. that's all I've got in my head. Um, so in that uh, book, so not only are they they're sort of drawing all the monsters and races that are outside of... Um, campaigns books that they've given and and the player's handbook so all the stuff in that is sort of uh, certainly all the the races over 30 races they've said mm. are campaign setting agnostic so they just you know unless they are you know they, so you can play any of these characters anywhere so again makes me think of oh well multiverse that like you can be them any planes for that mm. but what they've said is that they're trying to rebalance the monsters and the, in the panel they were showing a uh, slim down uh, yeah, well, very, well, they the very, bar, very, didn't they? That yeah, was the very, issue. yeah, very, very small writing. So yeah, I, even I was like yes. enhanced trying to yeah on my up. phone trying to read what the differences were. Um, but yeah, slimmed down, and they showed yeah different artwork and different. But yes, essentially with the sort of rebalancing, they have sort of taken out a lot of the combat spells for stuff, and it's made it more. What was the word they used? There was a word they used. It wasn't combat. It was more survival i think yeah, right. stuff to stuff to help them in combat but not necessarily combat spells but more importantly and i think all the dms breathe a sigh of relief when i say this it's like you don't as a dm have to track spell slots for monsters and yes. i was just like that sounds yes. amazing i know oh my gosh they have a spell casting action 
Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have spell slot. I mean, oh, I don't, to be honest, I'm going to tell you now, I don't mm-hmm. track them. <laughs> no, me neither. <laughs> By no. the way. So they just cast what they cast until you kill them. Because, to be honest, yeah, that's how I, I figure it. Because it's silly I, otherwise. I think, because again, it comes to that idea that in previous times when maybe you were like, the, you know, everyone would come and sit around the table and stuff like that and it wasn't online or, or we, you know, it's like this is the dedicated night. Mm. I can imagine the DM properly prepping this. It's like, here are all the encounters I'm going to do and then writing out, okay, this uh, NPC number one, this is their first round of combat, stuff like that. And people still do that and I think that's great if you have the time. Mm. I it's barely, when they go, okay, we're in a fight now, all right, I'm just going to look up the creature, have a read of the stat block, okay, yeah. I'm going to use this thing first. If it spells, I go... Mm, okay, I'll just just go for the best. Yeah. Again, thanks to DMD, thanks to D and D Beyond. Obviously, you can look all these yeah. stuff up very quickly. But imagine and actually like, the fact that you can hover over it and it tells you all the spell details oh, is bloody instantly. useful as well. Because yeah, yeah, otherwise you're like, okay, get the other book out, and it's just a lot of a lot of heads <laughs> and books are not actually playing. So I, it'll be very interesting to see this because again, they've essentially we're taking this the spell casting sort of trait and making it into just a simple action. It's Talk, they've talked about it's helping to rebalance some of the monsters because apparently clearly the way we've been playing this Hamilton is completely wrong but apparently people were using these monsters with the spells but creating it so that they were attacking at a level lower to their critical uh, their challenge rating Yeah, and I was like that in my head I was like that's insane that you obviously you put it at say like a no, challenge rating yeah. 10 but you could in your first round just because you've had a bad roll or everyone mm. saves against it they're not as powerful, and suddenly you're like, oh, well, now we have five adventurers yeah. about to attack this. You're big bad. Yeah. Oh, sucks for you. But now they're going to rebalance it or try to rebalance it so that yes. you're a bit stronger as a result. So. No, exactly. And I, I also like the other thing that they're changing that I am a big fan of. If anyone's watched Dragon's Duel, I love alphabetizing. Ah. I'm trying to find monsters. Oh my gosh! Thank <laughs> goodness. Like, who thought it was necessary to put them by type? Like, that was. You don't need that. I'm sorry. Bad. Or, I love a good organization. Uh, system and this is much better just go by the alphabet because I'm going Bulgara wait is it a demon right or is it a, is it an oh. abominate is it what the, is it I'm sure I'm, no it's not oh fuck it's the wrong one and that's always the wrong one so yeah. I mean with D&D Beyond I just google it and try and spell Bulgara I don't know how to spell it so I go to google to find it and then find what it's spelt like and then go to D&D Beyond and find that book and but, but now, but now we're going to take off mere minutes of that time, so exactly. you can now finally go ah, oh, alphabetical size. So, Fiona, mm-hmm. what would you like to be in the future of D and D? Because they've said what they're going to make, but mm-hmm. we've obviously got to have some of our own ideas as to what we'd be really excited to see happen in D and D as we move into the next two, three years. They're really talking about, yeah. Yeah, no, I very good point. I think for me, there's two two big things I really want. I want pronunciation guides for everything they've got it in wild beyond the witchlight which i was very excited for because now i could pronounce all these mm. villains or or major npcs names without going onto the internet and trying to find usually a, uh, an american saying it and then going oh, that's not how i would say it and changing it all completely um i would love for there to be more softback cover versions of stuff like i rebought curse of strad the revamped version purely so i could like use it and read it properly on the tube and stuff and not worry about it getting um yeah, uh, uh i want that yeah. as well yeah I just not, well. it's just it's just because it was just and it, obviously lighter and i could put post-it notes i felt so much better about i didn't write in it before you say anything i just i had it just so i could use it and go back and forth whilst i had my hard co- hard cover copy mm. as well to, to to refer to and I think the other thing that that did, the Curse of Strahd uh, revamped stuff did, is that you can then have um, the additional sort of monsters in a separate booklet as well. So you could take that and just use those as well. You had a nice big bit of tarot cards. I got a lot of that. So yeah, I, I liked gift sets like that, like regift stuff like that, but as soft cover versions. So maybe okay. they'll do that for some of the earlier ones, perhaps. I don't know. Yeah. But the, those like are my that. main two. Those are my you main made two. me think of what I want as a 90s kid. I yeah. want a Filofax variation, <gasps> right? So A4 Filofax, you know the Filofax yes. you used to buy the, the yes. sets for Filofaxes. Mm-hmm. I want that for D&D, <laughs> okay? I want a one, I want a nicely organised little A4 ledger that I can now mm. Filofax them in. <laughs> can we have that, please? Um, I, yeah, so you could, like, literally you could get out the chapter you need. Mm. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And yeah. then, oh, yeah, and then, oh, yes, I also would like an, an official was the, the Coast <laughs> Pilot. I seriously think, and you could have little tabs. You could flick to the different, you know, so you'd have your little tab for Curse of Strahd or your Monsters mm. Manual. Do little, mm. I mean, seriously, come on. I mean, you could do it yourself, but I want a nice one made. No, no, we want an official. Like, I, I think it, if anything, yeah. we that anything that's told me about like stuff like Wild Beyond the Witchlight, like mm. I recently received the uh, the the cool dice set uh, box. Oh, I was yes. like, it's yeah, because it's. I was like, it's a nice box. I want it. So. <laughs> but I, I do awesome. like. Oh, yeah, I mean, like so, like because I pulled them out. Um, but like they came with obviously like little maps and stuff like that. Obviously, the one of the carnival. Yeah, um, see more of that stuff would be great. More like art posters and stuff would be fantastic. Yeah, just like l- little ones like that, because then I, like, I love the big ones. But like for me, I wouldn't put them up anywhere. I'd like to get them framed or something like that, because I'm, yes. I'm sad like that. But like little ones like this, I could put somewhere or, or be able to share with people mm. rather than print them out as well. Well, that's the thing. It's like the maps that they come in it. You know, if there's, I mean, if they're talking as they're talking about this more digital media, you know, mm. I just, you just start thinking of all these ideas and you think like. A really good version of Roll Twenty would be great, <laughs> mm. you know. And that's just integrated to when I buy the D and D Beyond version, I don't mm. have to spend another thirty quid buying the Roll Twenty version, and also yep. buy the book. And I mean, if they could integrate that system, that would be so much more more yeah. fluid and better. Yeah, and you you spoke about it earlier as well. This idea of accessibility, and yeah. in Wild Beyond the Witch, like certainly um, on the D and D Beyond version, that they have. Uh, printer-friendly versions of it, so it's, it doesn't yes. have the art or something like that. So for certain mm. handouts and stuff, and that that would be really good as well. Like I know if you've got the actual like books and stuff, they probably wouldn't have that. But being able to like mm. have stuff at the back which you can photocopy easily, or, or I mean, the dream I know is to buy uh, buy a physical book and then have the PDF version, like a code yes. that you could unlock. I know D and D Beyond and Wizard of Coast are two separate companies. So yeah. That's probably never going to happen, but. but like I know my local game store does it, uh, where you buy the book. They, you know, if you pay a little bit extra, like a ten pound, fifteen pounds extra, you get the the PDF code sent yes. to you, and you have it online. And so because that be so good. I buy this. Is the thing I love about having the the physical the the because so I got an iPad and mm. I love draw, writing in my books. Okay. <sighs> I can't help it. I know I'm not. A, I mean, but I love it. I love to personalize my books as much as possible, I, particularly like textbooks and stuff. My school, like when I was at university, my books mm. are just all filled with my own writing because <laughs> someone will want to buy that one day, I'm sure. Uh, but <laughs> no, but um, just because I just love to just be there and just highlighting and making notes. And it just is so much easier for me to manage my, my thoughts. And mm. that's what I love about having it on the iPad is that I just note and sketch and make all my notes as as i'm going and i'm not destroying the original book which i would obviously love to have as a nice clean copy so yeah no absolutely and i think like obviously the more and more you obviously get laptops that can turn into ipads and like you said like you the touch screens and stuff like that Mm. it seems yeah like i'm so i mean dnt beyond it feels like it's been around forever but it's only been like two or three years and then only recently has it had yeah. the um being able to use it offline as well yeah which has been an absolute godsend not being connected to the internet whilst looking up stuff so who knows what um what what comes up but i think yeah. hamilton um i think that's it i think that's all we've yeah. got from the yeah. D future stuff but it's exciting i'm and i actually mm. would recommend people to look back at some of the other panels that were over the D celebration there was stuff about uh how do you do a session zero creating your first character for with, with young children you were getting them into it, which I thought was actually quite cool. Um, obviously, Thanks. stuff on Strixhaven, uh, Fizz Bands, uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, you know, all, all the stuff that's coming up, and obviously this panel as well. So mm. I, I, I'm one of those people who likes watching the panels because I do find them interesting, and they have like DMs and people who run games regularly all over the all over the world talking about stuff. And it, I, it's like this show really, um, mm. obviously, but we'll get there eventually. <laughs> we'll, we'll just talk about their panel first. Yes. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> But I recommend watching those, so for sure. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I thought they were really good. And I think, actually, that's the other thing you were talking about when you were talking about the... It reminded me as well, the um, children involved in D&D. I think more of that could be... They did those um, variations on the monster manuals, didn't they, for children? Oh, yes, the Young Adventurer's Guides, yes. Yeah. yeah, and I think some things more like that would be quite interesting just to try and engage engage new people and new ages into yeah. into the into the into the sport <laughs> into the sport into yeah the no into yeah. the game but i i think um but they've got the new uh D ma- uh i almost said manual D 
annual coming out, oh, the 2022 right. coming out, which is interesting because I I don't know how successful the first one was because to- and we discussed this on a on a previous episodes of DM's Book Club. Uh, annuals are a purely British thing. Americans is that right? don't have it. Not an American yeah. thing. No, oh, they have n- they have that. no idea what it is. Oh, it's I fascinating. Thought a, I thought that was a, yeah, no, the Beano annual and the Dandy annual but and all again, that but they're all they're all UK comics and stuff. So of course, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so there you go. Anyway, Hamilton, mm. thank you so much for talking to me about D and D and the future of it. Pleasure. What are you up to? Where, what am I up where to? can we find you? Yeah. What am I How up to? Well, the week that this comes out will be the week after our um, season two one shots have all finished. So Ooh. we're on a break for the Dragon's Duel at the moment, and we mm-hmm. are building up some ideas for what that season three may be whatever that is <laughs> wait is, it, is this is this you doing a D futures panel by going here's an announcement but we can't <laughs> yes. tell you anything about <laughs> yes it is literally yeah we've got fun we've got some ideas it's all it's all it's all balls in the air at the moment but we will have some announcements all on our twitter soon um mm-hmm. but the thing i can announce though is that we have neglected our podcast listeners so if you are a podcast listener to this and you've enjoyed season one of Dragon's Jewel and thought you only put one of those season twos on there and you've made it three hours long and it's not, you know, we are doing some work in the background to get the that out. So there will be hey. lots of announcements on when those are coming out. and There'll be a weekly schedule and it will be much more organised and give you everything that we've done since March, I think was the last time we actually probably put something on there. It's um, it's been a long pandemic. So yeah, it's totally <laughs> yes. understandable. Yeah, so we are going to get that out for you, mm. podcast listeners. So yeah, that's what we'll be doing. Fantastic. How about well, you? What about you, Fiona? What are you up to? Well, well, I'm so glad you asked me. So obviously, uh, I run the What Am I Rolling podcast, which is a twice monthly RPG one shot podcast. As always, it is going very, very well. Um, I never know what I'm being released at any point. Um, Vert probably at this point. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe some solo stuff. We yep. don't know, but it's it's all it's all there. You can go check them out on obviously uh, our website. That's www.wairpodcast.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Which I like to think they are just in the ether mm. around us. Um, but stuff like this, obviously, we're on Dragons Jewel Twitch. If you're watching us, um, we're going to be here every Thursday, nine pm BST slash GMT because that's going to happen soon. Uh, which is yeah, I know. I yes, it's awful. Coming off on us. I, it's yeah. I, awful. I hate. I hate changing. Um, but obviously we're here. We'll talk about all this stuff, and the vod will be released probably a week or so after, yeah. and then we'll be on podcast as well. So do check that out. And of course, finally, finally, we have uh, offer code at Third Space Gaming in Burnley. Um, that's ten percent off uh, your first order if you put in DMBC into checkout, and it can be on anything. It could be on new books. Maybe you're going to wait. Don't wait! Don't wait till 2024. Uh, get 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 the call, get the order in now. Um, what for whatever it is? Uh, they're lovely and they're great. And a friend of the show, Derek, um, who I've had recently on as a guest for DM's Book Club. Um, we we spoke and he apparently has a football shirt from Burnley Football Club, which surprised me. Um, someone's living in the middle of nowhere, America, isn't he? Quite yeah, yeah, I was like, I was like, that that's a that's a. Burnley football shirt. <laughs> I've not seen one of those. I was going to do just... my Iba Gumba. Well, I've oh, done it now. Oh, no. <laughs> what? what are you talking about? Right, anyway. With all we do. that out We can say what we're doing next week, though. We can say what's coming we out can. next week. Yes. We can. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> we're doing... It's, well, Critical Role Season 3 campaign starts next Thursday, the 21st of October. This is going out on the 14th of October on Twitch. Yes. So for those of you, if you're if this comes out similar time on the podcast, 21st of October at 9 p.m. British Standard Time or GMT as we say, it'll be British Standard Time. Still, then we're doing a Critical Role campaign guides extravaganza yes. special, and basically when we finish. It will be still a few hours before they actually start the actual category. But, but hopefully it's, it's we, we'll have recapped it all. So yes, yeah, yeah. so that's going to be the Taldori campaign yeah. uh, setting, which was done by Green Ronan Publishing, and yes. also the Ex- Explorer's Guide, Guide to, to Wild w- Mount. Yeah, we're going to be doing Wild a double, double bill look at the two of them uh, in preparation. So you can watch that, have a bit mm. of tea. If you're in America, it'll be perfect time. You could watch that, have a little bit of tea, get some snacks. Sit yourself down and watch the beginning of season three, campaign three of Critical Role. So that's that's our oh, special exciting. next week. Yeah, oh, very exciting. Anyway, until then, f- uh, friends. I was going to say fans, but fan friends. <laughs> 
Franz. <laughs> All of Franz. Until then, my friends, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll end as always. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> wait, what's this? <gasps> oh, wait, you brought brought me back here. We've, we've done this episode, Hamilton. What's got, uh, if I go this on? way and you... Yeah. Sort of reel you back in. No, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way. <laughs> on my screen, <laughs> yes. you're going. All right, hang on. Yeah. We'll do that again. Okay, ready? Whoa. Go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> right, come back here then, what? Fiona. It's it's been a week. What what's going on? What I, I don't understand. I know it's not been a week for them. It's been moments, but for us, it's been a week because I've changed outfits and everything. <laughs> I know we had a quick wardrobe change. <laughs> you might see it next week. Uh, but uh, yes, there have been developments on the future of D and D. There yes, has been it's, it's, multiple it's one of those. It's one of those things where we're like, it's been two weeks since they had the big announcement. There won't be any developers, no. and then there's a lot of developments. So, <laughs> exactly. what what have we had? We'll do a quick five minutes of what has happened in yes. the intervening weeks since this episode. So, uh, since we recorded this episode, first up, first thing that came out was Unearth Arcana with this Ooh. bad boy, the. Yeah. Travellers of the Multiverse. Yes, I'm very excited. So what is this un Unearthed Arcana then? Well, this Unearthed Arcana basically says it's going to be Spelljammer. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> uh, oh, big letters now. Spelljammer confirmed. Spelljammer <laughs> confirmed by DM's Book Club. We have insight. No, we don't have any inside knowledge. But We we just said what everyone else was saying, and then it turns out we were right. Yes, exactly, result. yeah. And... Uh, yeah, it was by Christopher Perkins and Jeremy Crawford. So it's playtest stuff. As Unearth if people who don't know what Unearthed Arcana is, it is playtest uh, material that's sent out very basically, graphically put to see how it goes. And they had them for the Horangar, the rabbit folk before. Yes, they uh, did. Uh, they... So the, the folk of the Feywild, that's what it was called. Yes. And then they had Gothic lineages as well for they Van did. Richten's Guide to Ravenlock. So, and Draconic Options as well. Presumably that's coming up in Fizzband. But yes. yes. So there you go. So this... they do generally yes. relate to what's coming up. So it's a good identifier. Indicator. Mm. And so, so this, oh, yeah. yeah. What have they got then? What have they got? Well, well, let me say, they've got six races and they're all very interesting. And we're only going to do a quick brief view of it because obviously mm. we've only got five minutes. So they have an astral elf, so a denizen of the astral plane who is likely to be thousands of years old. So that's pretty cool, interesting. An auto gnome, which 100% I want to play. Yes. This idea of a mechanical gnome gifted with free will. Uh, oh, yeah. uh, yes, uh, that, that, that has me written all over it. And uh, a fan favourite, I think this is the real reason Spelljammer keeps being asked to come back, is GIF or GIF, depending on mm. Haji or, or Softji. Yeah. Um, it's the Space Hippos we talked about in a previous season. Uh, they're back. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know how you pronounce this. this Hadazi, I think. Hadazi. Hadazi. Hadazi, uh, so a highly adaptable simian being who uses wing-like mem membranes to glide. So I am yeah. I'm picturing like a flying squirrel, really. But oh, okay. Or, or a bat. I saw. I saw. It's sim simian is a isn't that a primate? Oh, that... you're probably right. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. I, see. I think that. it is. I think no. it's a sort of a like a chimpanzee. I think is where the oh. Z comes from. I think. I think oh. so. I think it's a flying. Um, it's like monkey. a flying monkey. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, like, again, this is as you can tell. Neither, well, AKA I I from Wiz Wiz Wizard of Oz. Oh. Oh, I see now. Yeah. See, as you can tell, I'm not respell. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have to do that in the next episode. Yeah. Uh, a plasmoid. An amoeba-like being, which I'm like, okay, interesting. But yeah, in my head, that'd be quite cool because you're, you're an ooze of some sort. And then finally... I just got fart from Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then yeah. finally you got the... Cre uh, the, the re Thrike thri oh. Thrycreen. Thrycreen. Yeah. So a uh, six-limb telepathic insectoid. And I remember seeing on one of the comments saying, these are my favourite. And I was like what and i read them and they're, they're like um they're cockroaches in a way or uh, insectoid yeah. creatures which i believe are native to the dark sun setting so maybe yes. it's a mixture of they are in spell gemma both and... oh are they there you go then. i think they are but then spell is weird because it accesses the whole multiverse so technically right. yes i think that is the dark sun relation as well and mm. they're pretty awful they kind of are um uh, starship troopers sort of thing. That, kind of that's like the it. vision I have in my head of mm, them. Yeah. So, how interesting. So, yes, yeah, yeah. so that's just a quick look at these. And obviously, this has come out, so I'm sure we'll do a, yeah. a deeper dive at this point. But how exciting. Uh, Spell Jammer, Dark Sun confirmed. Yes, Hooray! Basically. <laughs> basically. Are we going to talk about the other thing? Let's talk about the other thing. So, um, 
there was we talked about it brief, briefly about uh, this uh, alternate cover art that was shown of Boo the uh, the space mm. hamster, and that sort of referred to sort of uh, Minsk and Boo from Baldur's Gate coming out, mm. and then lo and behold. Uh, an interesting thing happened yeah. whereby a book went on sale and then quickly disappeared from sale yes. and then reappeared on sale. <laughs> Literally, it was very on, off, on, off, on, off. But yes, Minx, Minx and Boo's Journal of Villainy, which is um, actually very, very good. And I'd love mm. to do more about it. Mm. And it relates a bit to what we talk about next week, which is our Critical Role campaign. It has lots yeah. in the sense that it has... Uh, lots of good law it has really mm-hmm. great um sort of setting places and cities and more about the factions of a mm-hmm. which could become group patrons it has f- things about how to make a good villain it gives you some great villain stats i mean there's some good mm-hmm. monsters in this that i'm like i had a character i think i, I mentioned later on in our ghost walk campaign mm-hmm. <laughs> talk mm-hmm. chat mm-hmm. when there's Baal is in here and i had a i had a so there's and they've got some serious stats. If you want to chuck some proper BBEGs at your players, this is a book to get. Like we're talking yeah. 400 hit points and lots of lots of bad stuff to throw at people, and some great monsters, really great monsters. Yeah. Yeah, and again, so just some, even just looking briefly at the first couple of pages, some really cool art as well. Mm. And as someone, and I will admit this again, I have not played Boulder Gates. Uh, video game mm. series so it's, it's kind of lost on me a little bit but I am excited to see mm. what this is because again that's that sort of thing where we heard about it and then it sort of was mentioned and then it again was released and then taken mm. back because there was definitely uh, typos and editor's notes in it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then re-released as well. so and yeah uh, obviously this is on DM's Guild which you mm. can pay for and all the money goes to Extra Life which is obviously their uh, charity yes. that they're a part of so do go check that out and yeah again I know this is just us going oh this but has the, happened I'm going to just quickly just scroll through some of the yes, art please. oh my gosh it oh. is art heavy like absolutely uh, stunning pieces of artwork in here I, oh Jesus! I the whole thing is actually an absolute delight to to look at from start I, to finish. So I, I love I love a good map, and yeah, I'm just already some seeing some maps, cool but even maps. The, I want to cut to some characters. Here's some fantastic character art as well. I'm just mm-hmm. going to skip far down, try and get you some more without showing off too much of the book. Yeah, some, just, just go get it and give money to charity. That's, yeah, that's give money to charity because it is really great. But beautiful art, beautiful document. Um, and really, and actually beneficial to any campaign. So just get it. Yeah, yeah, just just get it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure at some point we'll, we'll do a deeper dive into it mm. as well. So yeah, just there's we, actually we one just more thing, isn't there, that we could mention that came out, which is uh, there's the yes, Critical go for it. Role campaign yes. adventure. <laughs> Sorry, my <laughs> dice went everywhere. <laughs> she threw dice everywhere. It's all okay. What? It's it's completely what? gone now. We just have to end now. But that's it. There's a Critical Role adventure, which is. Hinting at not the, it's going to talk about Marquette. We're going to be talking about Critical Role next week yes. because it starts next week, the season three. Yes. So before that, come and watch us before you have your tea, and then you go and watch the actual season three mm-hmm. uh, premiere, beginning premiere. But yeah. yeah, they they released on the Tuesday just before we recorded it, uh, which to say that yes, there's going to be. An adventure in the, in the Netherdeep, I think it's called. Yeah, Call of the Netherdeep, it's Call called. The, the first major adventure set in Critical Role's World of Exandria. And yeah, yeah. it looks like seven chapters of thrilling ex- adventure, new creatures and magical items. And obviously based in the new continent that will be in season three, uh, Marquette, yeah. which is very exciting. So, But yes. obviously we'll talk more and more about that stuff. 100%. And you probably see us both, see us both being very excited going, oh, we just got this 10 minutes before recording. Yeah, exactly. Unlike this stuff. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yes. So that is just. I think that was basically all the little news we just wanted to give, just to add in. Does that uh, change anything for you? Just seeing that, I think (sighs) this is a final word. Yeah. I. You know what? I am. It's one of those things where that D and D panel, as we were saying, sort of hinting at lots of stuff, saying, "Oh, this is coming in the next year and stuff." And then it was like, "There's going to be a blog post next month, or there's going to be something next month." And then suddenly we've had two very close things side by side. Well, now three things with the critical Mm. role things, and I'm like. Whoa! So clearly, is that something where they were holding on, and they're like, "Ah, sod it, just put them out. <laughs> let's let's yeah. just go all in one go." And it happened. It happened with Strixhaven and Fizzband as well. They mm. sort of announced. I think they announced Wild Beyond the Witchlight, and then within twenty four hours after that, it was another two books. So all yeah. three of them got announced, and I was like, "Bloody hell!" 
I mean, I was like, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I was like, amazing. This is great for our for our show. But yeah. at the same time, I was like, that's a lot of reading. <laughs> so, yes. so, but yeah. yes, yeah, so it's it's I'm you know what I'm excited and it, it's mm. it's going to be interesting. Like the the critical role stuff, as we sort of talk next week, we're both very big fans of. So it'll be interesting mm. to see what that comes out. But yeah. also the the whole sort of like the Baldur's Gate stuff, the Boo and Miss Minsk. Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm actually looking forward to it. Again, it's that sort of thing where I know it's a big part of D and D, as sort of the history of it, and mm. something I don't know much about. And I'm always inter- interested in saying how, where's, where have we got to from here, and just, and like you said, this idea of villains and stuff. I think we need to do an episode on villains. I think. Yes. How do you yeah. do a good villain? How do you make it so they're not just like a two D like I want to take over the world that you, they give them mm. purpose? Um, what happens when they don't get their way? Well, you yeah. know all that sort of thing. As I said, like, that if, that there's a there's a good thing from three E that talks about that as well. So I think we could do a whole. I think there's a lot we can we can build on villains. So yeah, I'm up for that. So, Maybe that's what yes. we do for the one after our our Halloween special. Sounds good. I knew you. I was, I was going to agree to it anyway, Hamilton, but yes, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. And of course, obviously, with all these new raters as well. So hopefully, we'll yes. come back to all these things. So, yes. Wow. Great. Oh, well, very exciting. Very anyway, exciting. Um, we'll I, see you next week. See you next week. week. Critical okay. role. Critical role. All right. See Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye.